<laughs> I, I had to look back and make sure Jordan was eating paper. He has me worried. <laughs> yes, yes, he was. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Oh man, we got a chunky show tonight, lads. Anyway, I'm Vin Stone. That is Jordan Swing over there. And to the phone right is one Pedro Mateus, staying up late past Hello. his bedtime, along with you at home, Shut Realm Dynamic, joining us live each and every week, helping us form cocaine voltron it's gonna be a fun night max like i know it's gonna be hot it was cool earlier this week and it's like hey i'm not like sweating directly in the studio but <laughs> such as things what have you guys been up to man i uh i learned something i learned a thing okay this is rare this happens mm -hmm. stay the way from the Witcher DLC, the first one at least. I don't know about the Blood and Chrome one, but that first one is... <laughs> Where the Cylons show up and you have to fight them as Geralt. Your first clue is uh, BSG Actual coming into the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. seems out of place. You know what? I just rolled with it. I, I'm glad right. I did. I'm glad I did. But unfortunately... That thing is like spite crashy as hell, everyone. Maybe it just works swimmingly for you. I went all the way through the main quest of the uh, Witcher 3 with Proton. Mm -hmm. Maybe two. If I'm being, if I'm highballing it, three spite crashes the entire time. This, this is just like left and right, random, being triggered. And it's a problem on Windows. It's also a problem with Proton. I went to Proton DB and they're like, oh, sometimes if you turn away from the thing that causes you to crash and walk backwards past, I'm like, you know what? Nope. Just, I'm done. Ah, the gone home strat. That was really all I've been up to. Our internet died in a fire um, Thursday, fortunately. It did. Yeah, that was, like uh... right before we went live, so... No, but, no, no Wolfenstein this week. No. Play, play a little bit of the uh, game with your chair set. Yeah, man. What else have you been up to this week, man? I was on vacation, so I've just been, like, literally doing fuck all. I, I, I was talking a, a bit about it in uh, the pre-pre-super shows, and I am so angry with Star Trek Lower Decks that I'm like, man, I need to go watch, like, a good Star Trek show. And so I watched uh, Deep, started watching Deep Space Nine again, because... We were talking what we thought of. Uh, they've announced that they're going to be doing a hilarious comedy-themed animated X-Files. <laughs> and the possibility of having um, the original Dana Scully and uh, Fox Mulder back. The, well, that, that sounds like such a train. We promise you we'll get into Lex Gaming in a second, kids. Uh, <laughs> we we got to talk about the X-Files. Yeah. Hold on. Business first. Um, <laughs> that could be such a hilarious train wreck. It could be watchable, though. Like... I, I I don't I don't know the X from what I remember like the idea of the X Files scaring me as a child and then as an adult I watched them like this is fucking goofy so I don't I don't know I think I think there's room for like comedy in there but we'll we'll we'll, we'll see there there is room in comedy for for the comedy in like um, Lower Decks but they haven't found it yet at all they're trying hard but they're failing <laughs> miserably Pedro, How about you, Pedro outside of starting your um. You you got the starter pack for the game collection hoarding. Yeah. You mean this one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Planescape Torment, Baldur's Gate, and Fallout 2. There's a total of 10 CDs inside this uh, teeny tiny little box here. Um, and the, the dude I got it from had it for sale on eBay. wanted like 45 pounds or something for it. It's like, I'll give you 20. And he accepted. So it's like, all right, there you go. <laughs> give me. <laughs> send <laughs> you put so much more effort than i do when i'm getting these interfaces i, I i've never made anyone an offer I, I, usually if the option is there it's like oh make an offer all right i'll pay you this and sometimes they accept <laughs> that's how i got this monitor too <laughs> 200 pounds and one p <laughs> well played well played <laughs> the p stands for pedro well it doesn't stand for horse <laughs> Now that, that would that would be the Porsche then. The Porsche. May but the Porsche be with you. Kevin it's Smith. the Steam. Let us. Of the week. Of the week. Of the week. Yes. Oh, uh, that, that's right. kind of horrifying. I'm like Kevin Smith. No. Kevin don't Smith. Make, that's the Porsche. <laughs> Porsche. Well, um, <laughs> oh, I don't no, think no, no. You, you'll be able to make <laughs> those jokes. Um, 
coming very, very soon to Steam. Well, if you decide to opt into the whole uh, labs thing, because this one for now is very much opt in. You need to go into the labs and enable the uh, language filter. They're creating a universal language filter that mostly excludes all of the commonly used uh, profanity words. And if you don't like it, if you did decide to opt into it and you don't like it, they actually have a thing. It's like, F you, Steam, how do I turn this thing off? It's like, if you've joined the experiment and find you'd prefer to see strong profanity and slurs, uh, you're free to disable some of these filters or all of these filters. Uh, otherwise, customize them as you see fit. Okay, that I was about to ask, but... What if I do like, you know, having 12-year-olds in Counter-Strike Global Offensive um, shouting racial epithets at me don't, or but, but, making but, assumptions? But Pedro, don't you want to meet your real father, that guy who killed you on that on DE <laughs> Dust that one time? Um, <laughs> or even making assumptions about my sexual orientation? Yeah, I, I need that stuff. That That's my Counter-Strike experience right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, I don't know, but like, I mean, give, given that like, you know, Steam can and has been used for like targeted harassment, this is ultimately a, a good thing. People should not be harassed on their platform of choice. But there's also there's also another uh, added fringe benefit for Valve in that, you know, video game industry doesn't want too many regulatory eyes on there if they're saying, hey, we're making it so that like children aren't being exposed to like negative content in our on our online service we have a better time of like you know onboarding them and getting them to buy hats and team fortress or whatever they're doing these it's days it's going to evolve baby because you yeah, that's just like salvo for the amateurs using the bad words that you get you, then we're just going to get smarter you're going to use your words better you're going to try to do some emotional scarring Mm -hmm. Cut in there <laughs> now, you, now th th then you actually have to go track down and fuck their mothers dude mm -hmm. good on you Valve for giving everyone the option to cut it off as long as that's there. There's no problem with it whatsoever. For me, the only thing it means is I'm going to randomly start adding, replacing random words with hearts just to fuck with people. <laughs> yeah, that 100%. That, that's the only effect. Um, you know, you, you know, if you post your Steam password, it'll censor it out too, right? All right. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. We 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 get we get a beta update. We got to talk about um pretty pretty basic bare bones. Uh, the EA Play stuff is now live. Um, as Linux users, we're not really going to see what this means until a couple weeks after, like the Proton guys get a crack at it and see what games they can get up and running. Um, but the other thing they added was um, when you're doing when they're doing the pre shader processing uh, on Rad V, they're cutting down the memory usage, which is good for people on uh, Radeon laptops or with the lower end cards. So you know, Valve's still trying to make the client not a giant flaming piece of garbage. Well, they kind of definitely Good. jumped on that because. You know, with the Vulcan uh, stuff, AMD dropped out last week. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do yep. some things. <laughs> yeah. It's good to see. Good to see. But and they also added support for uh, EA Play, or as Bushman in the comments says, um, EA Pay. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but to learn it, more about that, go watch last week's podcast. I guess. <laughs> yes. It, it's got a good feel to it, though. That's EA, EA going. Their, their greed overtaking their greed effectively yes mm -hmm. it's like wait a second even if steam is taking 30 percent of that money we still make more money than asking people to use origin it, it's like <laughs> uh, but more and but money money it, it's it's delightful it fills me with a warm fuzzy fuzzy feels uh yeah we didn't talk about the top of july though the top of July to you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, so top releases of July. Steam's been putting these out to, like, show developers, hey, we're actually promoting your games. Please don't go to the Epic Store. Um, so uh, we had a couple that we talked about. Um, Hellpoint, or Heckpoint, whatever the it is. <laughs> and uh, Carrion uh, made it the list. Uh, Superhot's also on there. That's Linux native. Um, there's the, that F1 2020 game. I'm pretty sure that's going to get the Feral special unless that contract is up. So maybe maybe Could maybe be, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah late, later in the year. Also, um, this wasn't the case earlier this week, but five uh, D chess with multiverse time travel, aka um, no, I'm not going to do that joke. That's too that's that's too edgy. Uh, but yeah, uh, they recently got Linux support, so it wasn't it wasn't playable in July. But if you want to play chess in alternate dimensions with Q, you can. All right, carry on, yeah. my wayward son. Um. 
I'm down with this, man. It, it's, uh, yeah, what the heck, a couple of things. I like seeing this. Also grounded, even though you didn't come to Linux, you had a really good release commercial. I gotta give you, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that trailer was nice. If you want to play the most epic game of 2020, wait until Cyberpunk, then followed by, um, <laughs> I thought that was, the thing. uh, when it comes to like F1, I, I think the only treatment that's going to be getting is the proton treatment. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We, we, we don't know what kind of behind the behind the scenes contracts Feral does sign with these publishers. So yeah, yeah, we, we will definitely see. It'll be nice if it does, but hey, I do like those options. But Steam Wallet, do you use Steam Wallet? I do. The odd time Jill sends me like a, a like a gift certificate for like my birthday or whatever. Um, when I sell the cards, yes, I have some credit in my Steam wallet. <laughs> yeah, but like, um, but you know, gift cards, they're, 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 they've been used in, in like scams since, you know, gift cards became a thing. People realized, hey, there's just like, these are just like money, but worse. How I can we, how can we scams problem? like the second they made them and like, and they devalue. Yep. Uh, they, they, they devalue and they expire. <laughs> well, in some places they expire. Yeah. Uh, and, and, any, anyways, uh, so to combat that, um, Valve will now track um, the uh, region of origin of the gift cards, so you can't like go try and transfer money and make a profit. Blah blah blah. Um, they're, they're, they have a whole FTC article explaining how the scam works. They it does a better job of communicating it than I do. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess it I, I, it behooves Valve to not let people use their platform for pro for fraud. Uh, or else they start getting that, you know, policy legislator attention that they really don't want. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I looked at this. I, I kind of looked into it a little bit. Um, this is also going to affect people who don't have a regional currency on Steam mm -hmm. because they were Hi, just, Australia. They have a regional currency now. Yeah, they, they have dollar reduce. Yeah. They've had that for like a year now. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> we, t we talked we about talked it on about, the show yeah, we covered probably it. <laughs> at this timestamp too <laughs> go back and check send us some hate mail uh it was at 937 yeah, not right. 953 Dude. but also if you don't have any type of regional pricing for your area i was reading a very like long detailed thing on reddit um you know of course you were filtering out the people that were like but i was just buying it from the cheapest place i could but they're like, hey, man, you know, like the games aren't priced regionally here. And it's like the full price is 60% of a monthly income for a game. So, yeah, I've been buying stuff, you know, mm -hmm. with the yeah. you know, bank access and they would buy the digital thing. Like, okay, this is going to harm some people. Uh, unintended consequences? Probably. Mm. Like, I don't know. I I don't think Valve is like so Trying voraciously to put the yeah car yeah carnivoristic like they realize that you know in order for people to play video games they need to afford a place to live so that they can play their video games from there so i don't think they're I think that's they're one constantly thing you can trying definitely to say it. about Valve. i was thinking about that the other day they they're not predatory I, they definitely i guess being a private company i'm like mm -hmm. we got money i mean yeah you're, yeah, you're gonna give us money they're, anyway they're thing yeah, their thing is what Jordan was saying, is like, they don't want people looking into their business, and if they allow this kind of stuff to go on, someone's going to start looking at it, or chances are someone already had a look at them, and they went to them privately and said, change this, or it'll go public. It's like, oh. Or they, 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 <laughs> they probably hire, like, a bunch of actuaries on staff to, like, examine risk as well, and just, like, look at how policy is changing so that they can react to that, because... I, I don't know. Val Valve's been caught off guard a few times. I think they may have learned their lesson involving mm. like let's let's be a little proactive and not have to go to French court. Well, it's like they, night court except with more cheese. They did exactly that uh, back to Oz Land when they went to the court the for the refunds. refunds. Yeah. yeah, but proactively, like you know what? That's just the thing. Now we're not going to mess with yeah. this anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So all right, good. Have you ever heard of Proton? I know we never talk about it. Hadn't even mentioned it. Not even in this show. I can't believe we went this long. It's, 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 it's like a subatomic particle, right? Uh, sure, Mr. Science Pants. Uh, there's <laughs> Mr. Death Science too. Shorts. Thank you very much. <laughs> there's a nice little write-up uh, kind of explaining to new users what it is, what it does, and Pedro, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Because Proton well, the, has happened. 
by the way. Yes, it did the happen. Protoning. And like over the like first month of it actually being out, uh, it doubled the amount of playable games on Linux going from just the native ones to the ones that actively work really, really well with Proton. It's like double, boom. And then, yeah, it's just been growing from there. And the article also mentions uh, stuff like ProtonDB that keeps track of all the games that Proton, um, not just the whitelisted ones, but all the ones that the community has been testing. And it aggregates all of those tests and gives you a score based on the, the aggregate. And yeah, I, I still stand by what I said when uh, like the other article about Proton came out and... Um, Flibbit's comments that Proton was probably not a good idea. It's like, yeah, it's not ideal, but it's the best we have, and it's doing a very good job of it. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, to to this, I mean, I, I, I like Proton too. I'm just critical of it because you got to be critical of the things you love. You can't just blindly accept them. Uh, but um, like like you were saying, like there or in the in the article, like that's not everything. Blah blah blah. You're not going to get the latest and greatest games. Um, Ven, you bring up a really good point in the show notes about like how dare the, you the 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 the, the, the <laughs> expectation here. Why are you gonna cut me like that, man? Why? Because I mean, what? Be, be, because I love to see you bleed all the time. Gets me rock hard. Um, no, but like there, 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 a lot of these articles are like pushing forward an unhealthy expectation that like, yes, Proton is the be all end all of Linux gaming, blah, blah, blah. But it's always going to be on the back foot. You're not always going to have the supported games. Uh, there's always going to be a delay between when a game releases and when Proton is able to adequately support it, if at all, due to like whatever anti-cheat they have. Um, and as Linux gamers, we've kind of accepted this as the reality over the years, but if I'm someone who's like, I'm getting tired of like forced Windows updates breaking my system, they're going to come over to Linux and they're not used to being on the back foot. They're used to getting the instant gratification. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I think it, it sets a bad expectation. I think it kind of does, man. Um, for me, the biggest problem I see with Proton is just the marketing. And that, that's us, me, you, everyone at home. Uh, because it's often sold as, hey, man, just come on over to Linux, man. Everything just works now. The games work. That approach, a little bit harmful, man. And because, you know, for like most of our crowd, let's face it, man. Gaming, piece of cake, you know, get your video drivers or set up your um, AMD. You know, you're not going to be using ProDrive. You're going to be using Mesa. Get all that set up. Boom, boom. No problem. Steam installed. You're done. Not an issue. Simple as hell. But that's because we already know how to Linux. So if you're going to be taking a Windows user, they're going to be at a severe disadvantage when they Linux themselves, man. And setting up a gaming environment on top of that, it's only going to complicate the matter. You need some kind of bash script. You, oh, spoilers. <laughs> Stick around for the news. I just think that's a bad, <laughs> expecting, and I'm not picking on Windows users, just their intelligence. So, <laughs> and the competency and ability, right? I'm kind of kidding. But going to a completely different operating system, you're not going to walk in. How many times have you seen it online? Like, Linux sucks, everything broke, couldn't get something to run, is never underlined with, I had fuck all idea what I was doing and it's Linux's fault because I couldn't figure this <laughs> out in an afternoon. I mean, I, I, do you know how well I click on next buttons? <laughs> Yeah. I've even opened the registry <laughs> once. Just, 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 just to like cross the streams, MCU. This I was looking. I was looking over the this week's show notes for Weekly Daily Wednesday, and you there's there's a there's a story in there, kind of about this. And I thought like this is a weird like flip. Norm, normally, I'm not used to seeing people write about Linux like this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I I don't know. Like I said, it's 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 a matter of like setting and adjusting expectations because Linux is a great operating system, but it's not like you said, it's not Windows. Mm -hmm. it's, no, it's a whole different beast. It's you can't completely walk completely different. <laughs> you have to check your ego. Now, it, it, it's at a disadvantage because you can't say, "Oh, you know how to run." You have Linux. You would run Linux. You couldn't possibly figure out Windows. But come on, that's cute. That's cute. But <laughs> it, it just doesn't work the other way. I would be kind of lost. I've never played with Windows Ten. Tangoing with a Mac, man. I don't know where stuff is, and I don't blame the Mac. I do. It's laid out a lot like I gnome. blame it all the time. All the <laughs> yes, time. you do. I, I will attest to this. Yes. 
<laughs> Not a day goes by where I don't scream fucking Max because. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm spoiled. Things just like work in Linux, right? Like, uh, right. But it's because you know how to make it. That that's yeah. That that's the core of everything. You know what you're doing. When you it's get getting to that point where you plug something in and it just starts. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So let's, let's, something let's we talk like about... to do in the after shows, and uh, if you if you if you can ride this nightmare train all the way to the end, uh, we uh, play Left for Brad. It used to be Rocket League, but you epic um <laughs> spoilers yeah so we crack open left for dead and it's team lgc plus one versus uh shot realm dynamic and we get into it uh friendly non-competitive competition we don't keep score unless we win so it's kind of brilliant <laughs> uh I, I think generally it's more like team lgc versus scott and well, also, also <laughs> yes um <laughs> just because scott takes it that personally <laughs> he we, we we get the rarest of canadians we get the main ones we get the competitive ones and i mean it, it's pretty weird uh but there haven't been any updates i mean we, we've played the maps we're starting we're, we're to the point now of learning the campagons man i'm like oh mm. i kind of know that we're, we're less reliant on uh the pedro canary yes the homing pedro <laughs> It's the, the the Pedro carrot, you know, we we followed the Pedro. It's like it's almost like an anglerfish, complete with like our genitals gluing you, onto Pedro. You know, it's a mini game for me when we're playing because I have to factor in: is Pedro really going that direction, or is there something shiny over there that he? Wants? Or, or or is it is this the right way, or is he looting? Yes, it's it, left there for you go, one hundred percent. It's usually the right way. <laughs> <laughs> there is a better no. than non-zero chance if you you no. just ran into a fucking room because there's some ammo or some shit. In there. It, it it is it is XCOM ass eighty five percent. You're going the right way. <laughs> XCOM is what gave me trust issues, man. <laughs> 99 percent miss the reason miss. the reason we brought all this up is there's a new old campaign coming to left for dead 2 this is straight out of the horse's mouth man coming soon the last stand it has been many years since the infection first hit uh, da, 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 the last stand and updated is an updated wait is that the last is an updated for that's not grammatically it, correct at it, all the, is it no oh, it is an update i'm reading it wrong yeah. <laughs> yes damn it literacy Boo. <laughs> uh created by the community for the community additional details will be coming soon until then check out the teaser let's get teased lads man i'm i'm i was watching this thing and i'm like that's a fuck box that's a fuck box <laughs> oh you better believe that's a fuck box that's a fuck box but uh, yeah yeah isn't this just this is just the lighthouse from the first one right mm -hmm. yeah are we excited yeah i mean it's more more stuff to play right like i'm not i'm not i'm and not the like the trailer says nothing like literally nothing it just looks like they took two different bits from two different maps mashed them together and set a penning camera around it that's it i was gonna open <laughs> yeah. for a little bit of help because i know both of you the first time i'd ever played left for dead 2 or left for dead anything was steam came to linux then left for dead 2 came for linux but i knew the first map i figured both of you had or at least one of you statistically had played this Mm -hmm. yeah so that's a no <laughs> you haven't yeah uh so we have. i i, I, I so <laughs> i never actually i actually never played the first left for dead i Pedro played just, the, no, ma the maps be quiet Pedro just said you did condescendingly <laughs> he went back in time and strapped me to a chair and forced me to play left for dead it was horrible oh no the memories are coming back now ah your pants back on um never <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It, it. It'll be a totally new experience for me. And it, we can be rest assured that Scott's already playing Left 4 Dead 1 as we speak right now. <laughs> data mining all the yeah. all the information. Yeah. Pretty much, man. So uh, new game. Wait, no, game updates. That's where we're at. So let's keep going with that with Children's of Morticia. Yes. Mort uh, Mort the, um Adam's Family One. This is uh, Children of Morta, which I realized that it was showing up on the Linux games list, and I was like, okay, yeah, I know they promised the Linux version on their Kickstarter, but they still haven't delivered that, so I click on it, and then I see it's like, oh, there's been an update recently. Click on the updates, and now there's a Linux version available. Well, 
I'll go and eat shit now. Uh, the, <laughs> the, um, no, it's uh, published by 11-Bit Studios, which they have a bunch of Linux games out uh, already. And um, yeah, it's a roguelike type of situation where uh, you're playing as a family of adventurers. It, it, it seems to follow like the usual tropes for this kind of thing, but we're going to be throwing chairs at it, so stick around for that because yeah the um publisher 11-bit studios were very very kind and they decided to uh send us some keys but at first they only wanted to send us the one because it's like oh we uh, we only give out one key per steam curator it's like I, I gave you the curator page after that was like the very last line of the email after an entire spiel about how we are the Linux gaming podcast. You say that but, like it means something. <laughs> yeah, it's Jeez. like <laughs> I am the fastest man in Micronesia. Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I didn't even reply. I, I just let him sit on that one. And a couple of days later, it's like, oh, sorry, I, I. I didn't read your email. Uh, and uh, it's like, okay, here's three keys. It's like, all right, cool. Thanks. I, I want to see the hate filled vitriol of and smugness you wrote back. It was like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I was well, just like, um, no, that's, that's fine. That's all right. We do have uh, the Steam Curator page, but that's just for people who are not comfortable sending keys over email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> they, they also have a new update that came out this week. So when we threw chairs at it, we got all the brand new goodies. Yeah. So there's that. Pretty cool. It's the, it, yeah, we, 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 got, we got some new games. Pe Pedro, have you mastered the art of rally? No. No, th this one is fucking hard. Okay, imagine uh, if watercolor <laughs> went for a drive. Yep, and it's got a top-down view. And uh, would you like a like a you know the behind the color oh, has or a top -down in cockpit sorry, or, view? Wait a minute. Yeah. Would you or would you dare imply that all these screenshots are lies? Uh, most of them, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the I tried the demo. Maybe they'll have like the other camera modes. In there, we go. That that that's actual gameplay. Drift. That's what you're looking at the we... whole time, not that. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's a very I want to say cell shaded, but at the same time, it's not cell shaded. It's just completely lacking textures uh, in all respects but it is very much uh a rally game and it seems to follow like if you've played um dirt rally or dirt rally 2 the physics are very much the same and it is not an easy game to uh master in any way it's not out yet uh, they, they do say that the planned release date is sometime in 2020 but there's a demo out and i played it and it's like okay this is uh, better than drag, because, wow, that demo was god-awful, but this one is actually very much on point, but it, it the helicopter view. I, I looked at mm. it, and it very much reminded me of the finished game that we were sent, uh, the Blood Rally. Where mm -hmm. you, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, when, when he was doing that drift, I was like, is he going to slide into those people in the yeah. car? Yeah, extra points, <laughs> artistic impression. Yeah. But, yeah. hey, man, this is not even an early access or anything like that. And, yeah, hey, demo, go check it out. Give them some feedback. That's uh, usually what you're looking for when you drop something like that. So, good on them. But, up next is Trippy. It's so trippy. It's basically Super Vaporwave Boy. Va bleh, vaporwave what? Boy. Vaporwave? <laughs> vaporwave. Vix Vaporwave. Ding, you, rub, ding, you rub it on your chest ding, ding, and then you look like a art from the 90s. <laughs> no, um, it's, 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 a, it's an action platformer. Uh, save your planet from intergalactic tyrants. Do a bunch of acid. It looks, it'll look pretty. I don't know. Um, it, it, it's out now. Uh, oh, you can so get this it. is 2D platforming, eh? Yes, action okay. platforming. Um... <laughs> Like, like I said, it, it kind of gives me a bit of a Super Meat Boy vibe, but like with more Vaporwave and some shooting. Um, and <laughs> yeah, uh, you can pick it up now. It's 25% uh, off, 13 bucks Canadian. Normally it's 17. Um, I, don't, I don't know. This one does not have a demo, so I did not play it. Mm. App 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 apparently, uh, it, apparently you're attacking people on the moon, so I'm curious if you have to fight Moon and Knights. As one does. They, <laughs> yes. Dude, yeah, the last one, it's a quad laser. It's going to cock you all up, man. Look at the oh, size of the bullet. Someone you can't didn't dodge change it. the defaults. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it's out if you want to play with it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of platformed out, man. I am. 
the, the only platform I have in my future is uh, eventually playing that sequel to Glowy Animal Or, 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 or in uh, the Blunt. Will of the Wisps. Yeah, not Hollow Knight, that one. Yes. Oh, September 4th when um, Blasphemous is coming out for Linux. What then I might Silk get some platforms in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, let's uh, continue on with the driving because we can't drive, do, do, do. right? Do, this do, is part of the do, do. Indie Arena booth online. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is, this thing is totes a part of it, man. You can race your car while, in all caps, your friends builds your friend builds the track. And yes, that's messed up. I don't know. Is it? Is it? I'm, I kind of me kind of reminds me of like a racing ultimate chicken horse. That could be fun. But Pedro, why are we talking about a game from 2016? <laughs> because it's out on Linux now, and uh, there's a demo available. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Which, uh, it's still in early access, to be fair. Uh, oh, oh th right, right. That made yeah. me sweet. I'm like, yay, we needed a new one. Thank you. <laughs> Hilarious <laughs> and also. <laughs> yeah, no, 2016, so uh, coming in on four years almost next month, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it has a demo available, and I very, very much like this trend of like early access games or games that are coming out having a demo that you could play. No. Yeah. Thank you. That's why I put Appreciate it in the notes, because this is, <laughs> this is new for them. This is a demo. I'm like, okay, hey, that's the thing to try, and it, it's easier to use the demo than to misuse the refund system, right? I, I agree, agreed, hundred percent. Now, what what they need to do is they need to like continually update the demo as like mm -mm. the development progresses. No. It's a no, one no. and done, yeah. like Linux one, one and done. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I was going through their list of promises because this is still in early access, and they're like, yeah, we promise there will be stable network multiplayer for the final release. That fi that fills me with hope. Yeah, we just uh, hired a guy from Frozen Byte. Uh, I, 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 one, we, we just we, we, we copy pasta the super tux cart net code spoilers yes. <laughs> so real quick before we get done uh with this segment uh our epic watch is not over just for i don't know morbid curiosity a, a little bit of a uh, short and road we we're covering <laughs> Just a little bit of the epic and Apple billionaire slap slap fight. We need to get a graphic for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the latest news: Microsoft backs Epic's request to keep using Apple developer tools. Epic also claimed Apple was threatening it with a host of other developers. What the fuck ever? I mean, um, basically, <laughs> I wonder if this has anything to do with like X Cloud being disallowed on the iStore from by Apple. Hmm, possibly. Also, I'm like, are you? Epic, you, you, you trying to slide up in them DMs with Microsoft and be like, yo, how about not, you know, getting that 30% cut on Xbox? I don't know. <laughs> no words yeah. on that. <laughs> but yeah. also, uh, there's a new Forza coming out, uh, and with the new Xbox coming out, I'm sure Microsoft wants to... Um, stay on Epic's good side to a certain point. Well, well but, they, yeah, they, were, they, were, they were saying that, like, what, Forza, Forza 7 is using uh, UE4, and that's on iOS, too, mm -hmm. so... The latest, the latest development that is broken with this is the ruling from the judge is like, yo, um, this was only yesterday too, or day before. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know what? Yeah, they broke your TOS, so while we're doing this court case, you can uh, nuke fork knives from the Apple iStore, whatever it's called. It's not the Play Store. I don't even know what it's called. It's, it's just the iOS store. <laughs> iOS store, which last night I went to eBay and sorted by sold. <laughs> for iPhone 10s <laughs> and looked at $10,000 iPhone 10s with an installed <laughs> version a fork knife excellent that I, was I, sold not being bid on purchased people are dumb oh, yeah. but, but like it, it's it's a weird situation i i, I went through and i read uh, phil specter's uh not, his name's not phil specter sure, it is uh, now it is the, i i i read the i read the dude's statement um and like yeah i it's it's it, he he is not incorrect in the things he's making he's the statements he's making in 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 the in the released statement. Um, lots of people use Unreal Engine four. Lots of people use it for the cross platform technology. If you pull that rug out from other people, they're gonna have to cancel their games. They're gonna have to redo development. Blah blah blah. And it's a shitty situation for the developers. But it's again, it's like app or Epic one hundred percent knew what the fuck they were doing. They knew they knew that they were pouring gas oh, yeah. on 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 the Tinder <laughs> and lighting the match. They are one hundred percent trying 
trying to break the rules and get away with it. And they're essentially trying to like take all their partners and use all that influence to like push to, to apply their weight. partners and they're paying customers because they're trying to weaponize their players to make Apple look bad. So that's the scummy bit. <laughs> well, well the, so the, the, the other thing too is like, what other company tries to use their their position and influence to weigh in on policy? Microsoft, right? They 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 want to they want to they want to support their mo. <laughs> Fifty one thousand dollars or See, five thousand one hundred. That, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the sold over these. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it it goes on because as a result of the uh, preventative uh, measures that Apple tried to take to get Apple to keep uh, Fortnite on the store and keep uh, Unreal Engine from, you know, uh, being orphaned on the store, uh, well, Epic decided to push the boat out once again. And they pushed out three updates for Fortnite on iOS and Apple nuked their developer account. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it basically boils down to <laughs> Epic going like, Wah, it's dead Wah. now. Keep poking that bear. This, you, you, you're <laughs> fucking with uh, the Kamehameha asshole of corporations. You, 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 yeah, you, you're like bringing they're this. They're the platform holders. They're dicks. Now, <laughs> here's something. Basically, if you have Fortnite on your eye device and that's your thing, you get to keep it. But on the upcoming series, it's going to be incompatible when mm. they release the new season, I think they call it. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to be an issue. Developers, you're going to be cool for now. I suggest looking at Godot or something other with Unreal because Apple's going to make an example of a motherfucker. I already got those yeah. seals. And uh, mm -hmm. Epic's going to be on the receiving end of that. And Apple's got the money. Apple's got fuck me money. You know, Apple can burn money just to prove a point. And, and on the other side, we got Microsoft going like, hey, baby, you can come back here. Yeah. You said all those bad things about our platform, but we, we won't cut you off. Yeah, that's right. That'd be great. Uh, we all know who's uh, dick Epic is sucking anyway. So. I've definitely tried <laughs> to Sony. think, is it just my disdain for Epic? Well, not even Epic, because I'm sure great people work at Epic. It's just Tim Sweetie. Um, <laughs> is, is it that is the reason? Because I'm not siding with anyone. I'm definitely in the stands eating the popcorn or the rest of it. I'm like... Go at it, dance. Um, but <laughs> if I had to pick this, am I leaning? Is it because it's the same for Epic? It's like, why do I not just have outright contempt for Apple? And I think I, for me, I know what it is. It's that it's completely their ball, man. They make the hardware and the software. Yeah, it's their they, platform. They, they own everything lot, about it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's their house. I mean, you may not like it, but I get it. And I think that's within, you know, that. Oh, also, yesterday, Facebook. Facebook were really upset about the new version of iOS because they're not going to be able to steal <laughs> your data as effectively. And that's not Yeah, fair. they can't uh, snoop on your clipboard. Like, yeah. uh, tough. Tough. <laughs> yeah, it, you it, can't it, it, do things like that unless you get the dictator thing down pat and dictatorship has some positives <laughs> if you're if you're the dictator yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> all right coming up next we talk about disgusting nvidia hacks and more more people complaining that new ios regulations and rules will stop people from selling their data And now that we're going on onto the news, uh, this is where we usually take our break to shill for ourselves, which we are absolutely terrible at it. I know for a fact that I, 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 <laughs> I, I can't. had to look back and make sure Jordan was eating paper. He has me worried. <laughs> yes, yes, he was. <laughs> Damn it. There he is again. Uh, <laughs> Professionalism, ladies and gentlemen. I was going to pass it off to him to uh, do uh, the shilling and uh, no, thank the people gonna, for giving us money, but... I'm going to do it while I... eating paper! <laughs> Fuck you! I can do two things! Uh, check out, check out LinuxGameCast.com. You're not my therapist. <laughs> You're not my printer. Shut up. If, 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 if you, if you want to cat LGC.com to your printer... Please send us a script on how you do that, because yes. I don't remember how to do that. But you can head on over to uh, LinuxGameCast.com, put your mouse over the support button. Oh, I uh, like we got that also... picture. Aww. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we got we got M, we got affiliate links. We got uh, PayPal. We got uh, Bitcoin addresses. We got Litecoin addresses. Blah 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 blah. If you want to support us, best way to do that is to head on over to patreoncom slash Linux Gamecast, though, because you get stuff for it. You get goods well you get services in exchange for your monetary thing we get the pre-pre super chosen if you're uh, at any level you can come in at 7 30 eastern standard time listen to us bitch and moan about star trek i guess star trek yeah um that was the theme of this week um among Indeed. other things um a little, a little a little bit more a week and you get access to the show notes you can make suggestions you can correct us you can sort of watch the Thing congeal and get ultimate spoilers for your Linux Gamecast experience if you're one of those people. Um, we got we got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. We have t-shirts, we got stickers, we got t-shirts and stickers. Sticker. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we, also, we also have, we also have coffee sticker. cups. It's been censorship, and you know, I, 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 I wanted to cover up Linus and his big potty mouth. Wait, so, so does that say <laughs> for hell elks you? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, LGC cares. LGC, literacy, man. <laughs> reading I, comprehension. I, I genuinely want to thank each and every one of you um, who are helping make this show possible, man. It's kind of fun. We get to uh, basically just be ourselves and not have to worry about <laughs> where our next piece of paper is going to come from since you're able to uh, the butt make at it this rain. I don't know where yes. to go, man. I'm lost. We, 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 got, we got, we got an Amazon store. If you want to see what we use to like put the show together, you can check that out. Um, we don't get any monetary support. We got affiliate links that also do not help support us in any way, shape nope. or form. They don't. We, we cannot all. say that they support us because Amazon would get very cross with us. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we, we, we could pull an Epic and say it and see if we can like use our weight to like get, the, <laughs> get their con terms of services changed. Be like, Tim, I'm not sure Tim, the other Tim. Epic's being, uh, Amazon's being, yeah, just to see if we just start a war. Yeah, <laughs> right? Let's, war. Yeah, at the gay bar, man. All right. Um, yeah, if, if you if you buy stuff off the wish list, uh, your name gets uh, put on the shiny wall behind Ven. It's good stuff. Your it name gets in the credits. Straight up embarrass you and like, Video is completely unrelated. People will be showing up to my videos to learn things about audio and video production. You'll be back there blinking. Yep. Indeed. That's your own fault. I have no control over that. And you get to send a note and we'll be dumb and we'll read it out. And Indeed. Tr try to keep that NC-17 and under. Okay. Indeed. Uh, Doesn't so... NC-17 sound more naughty than R? It sounds like the Enterprise or like a spaceship. I don't know. NC-1701- <laughs> fuck you i don't know oh. um <laughs> i don't know it, it seems like a terrible idea unlike what this guy's doing with mesa or not unlike what this guy's doing with mesa. <laughs> glx <laughs> delay what are we talking about accelerated glx for x whalen with you know it you love it linus's favorite vendor for gpu hotness nvidia man uh okay it, it's a bit hacky but hey, man, if it works, you know what? I'm not going to say it's not stupid because uh, having to have an actual need for some nonsense like this is fucking stupid. It just is. Thanks, NVIDIA. EGL for life, baby. Um, <laughs> Jordan, it does sound yes. unpleasant. It does. It does sound unpleasant. But essentially what's happening is you're doing a lot of copying from like system RAM to GPU RAM, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, um, it's being you, you might ask, this is um, this is for in proprietary NVIDIA drivers, right? Why are we implementing this through Mesa? Apparently, over the course of developing it, the guy got tired of copying and pasting code out of Mesa and figured to just extend Mesa to do the thing. Um, but yeah, um, there are. But what effectively this lets you do is it lets you um, run uh, X, Y, X apps through um, NVIDIA, which means you can do away theoretically with the X server entirely and just run everything under a Wayland environment. But there's a couple caveats here. Uh -huh. uh, accumulation buffers and stereo sto bleh, stereoscopic rendering do not work with the solution. Um, the guy is saying that once it's implemented, the the it should be about as performant as bare metal. So... Even though it seems like a terrible idea, I I really get the sense that this guy is positioning this as a solution, not the solution, which usually means that it will become the solution. See Proton. Mm. 
Oh yeah, that, I have no uh, illusions that anyone will try and do anything else. They will just take what he did, maybe extend it a little bit, maybe get the um, like the uh, accumulation buffers working. Although serious topic, I don't think anyone will care. But um, yeah, it I, if it works and it gets um. NVIDIA working with X Wayland without having to use their EGL streams because, like I said on Wednesday, they will die on that hill. They they do not give a damn. <laughs> this, this this is true. It's uh, NVIDIA is like a little baby Apple. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, 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 I mean, I mean, to NVIDIA's credit, EGL streams was the first way of doing it. They're like, yeah, we're on board with this Wayland stuff. Why not? And then mirror happened, and then driver fragmentation happened, and they're just like, yeah, we're just gonna do our thing. And everyone else moved on to the new hotness. But NVIDIA's like, no, but we we did the thing. Well, already. at least KDE showed up, and they're like, we'll bend the knee. Yeah. <laughs> it is as get long as known. NVIDIA is supporting those patches. But ultimately, <laughs> do you think this means anything other than Wayland's just ten years away? I mean, it's 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 a necessary step, right? Like, we're never going to get rid of all of these X apps. That like, from from, from a from a gaming perspective, all of these fucking old Unity games that we were like, oh my god, we have games on Linux now. Mm -hmm. Those ain't gonna work with Wayland, mm -hmm. and they're not gonna get recompiled to have Wayland oh, no. support, no sir. So this is this is kind of that crucial. What bit. type of amalgam proton VM loading? <laughs> This is, this, just this is where it's going. Proton should this do is where it's it going. because it does use SDL. Mm. <laughs> as long as it's available in snap format, I'll be happy. If you can download it on the iOS app store, you're good. Yeah. Good news, everyone. <laughs> RPCS3, the most horribly named emulator for PlayStation 3, uh, has a bit of a deep dive. They do. They've been doing this uh, for a while now. Just and it, it's it's interesting to read from a technical standpoint. If you're just a laser, it doesn't really matter. But they're talking about if you're um, a laser. Or you mean a sentient <laughs> reading laser? Is it like reading yes! rainbow with more laser? Is that <laughs> exactly. what happened to Jordy's vision? It is. It, it shot out and then it went to warp speed. Uh, no, um, but this is, this is about uh, hardware performance and where bottlenecks can occur and um, how to mitigate them and so on and so forth. And it's interesting if you are on a performance um, restricted system or if you have a stupid big computer and you want to get the most out of your PS3 games. Um, so a couple the the Cliff's notes are make sure you're using uh, by 16 PCIe lane with the latest PCIe revision. Um, anything more than eight core 16 threads will not get you any sort of substantial performance boost. I still want that 3900X. I just know it's not going to make <laughs> Sonic and the Black Knight run better. Um, and uh, they 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 also go into um, Spectre Meltdown, which I thought was like really yeah, interesting. I mean, as look well. at this. I mean, the uh, PCIe 2.0 looks a lot more still than the uh, 3.0. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's Ferps counters on the screen. Shut up! I'm having a good time. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the 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 Spectre meltdown mitigations. They do recommend keeping them on because you know Spectre is terrible. But um, worst case scenario, it's about a 10 frame hit, which is not the worst. Yeah. It's oh like, well. Um, then again, I mean, if sixth. your CPU is only running fast <laughs> enough to just yeah, hit just hit 60, yeah. 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 But yeah, the, their whole thing yeah. is like, okay, so RPCS3 really does like uh, higher clock speeds. Uh, and despite the fact that the Ryzen 3000 series does have better IPC clock for clock than the Intel CPUs do, Intel hits higher clock speeds. So that kind of performance delta will make a difference if you're emulating. Not just emulating, just gaming in general and everything that's like Turbo uh, single threaded, that still what, makes a difference. What, what if I got so, five gigahertz, man? Because I, I I saw a complete system on eBay and like with the AMD five gigahertz. Yeah, but the IPC on the FX series was poop. <laughs> oh, now yeah, you're it gets it, it, the field goals, man. It, 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 it gets outperformed by an R three. So, like, but, but 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 like yeah. the, 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 the whole thing about the uh, the single, higher thing, single thread performance is interesting because our PCS three does a lot of stuff in the background to like create the illusion of like real time processing with like a lot of batching and whatnot. But there are a couple operations that you can't really get away with doing that. It needs to be done in real time, and that's where having the higher per uh, single thread performance really does help. So. Yeah, it, it, it's a very interesting read. If you're into this kind of stuff, I highly suggest you give it a look because you might learn something. And those guys and girls have a patron. Go kick them they some do. shackles. Yeah, they're, they're, do, they're doing some whacked up shit with yeah. Vulcan too, so... 
Yeah. So good on them. Uh, something that also has Vulcan available, but very few people use it. Yeah, it's about Stor Storm United or whatever. That was the one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so um, Un Unity, uh, Unity, the corporation, uh, they're, they're big, big U, as it were. Big U. Um, big U. Um, they're 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 preparing an IPO. Um, they uh, they they uh, they uh, filed to go public, um, and they have a little caveat here where they're saying. Um, Apple and Google may change one, one, one of the risks because like, you know, when you when you're going public, you need to explain to people like this is how we're going to make money. But also these are this is how we might lose you money. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying Apple and Google are effectively the exclusive platform holders holders of our largest like platform base. Android and iOS make up the majority of the computers that people are using and playing games on in the world now. Um, yeah, uh, Apple uh, or Google may change their terms of services. That changes how they can collect user telemetry, data, et cetera, et cetera. These are all ways that games can be potentially monetized. So we are be we are at their whim, effectively. If they change how things work, then we don't really have a choice. The, this this is very likely inspired by the latest epic nonsense going on. Go see the previous mm -hmm. segment. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, I get the whole like... Uh, like the slash dot comments get into this because you know this the links slash dot <laughs> in, our, in our show notes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in our show notes. Um, but yeah, I, I get the whole like you have to explain how you make people money thing when you're going public. But I, I agree with some of the commenters. Like it's kind of sketchy that Unity is so willing to say like, "Hey, user telemetry and data, like we we can sell this. We can use this it's to make not you that money." It's just a part of their business strategy. It's mm -hmm. a significant part. Yes, and yeah. it 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 it, se it seems a little suspect that they're willing to sell out their users like that. So remember, kids, use open source tools. Hmm. I want to say one of the things um, I, I completely forget. This is something you can opt out of, uh, which is yes. good for Unity. Which I'm only reminded by the saving grace every now and then a developer will put that in their game, and they'll say, "Hey, by the way, uh, here's some mad stats that we're going to collect and send back to uh, Big U." To which, Big U. wait a minute, all right, dip, 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 and you go find the folder, and you're like, you know what, I've uninstalled a lot of you that are still sitting there, where's the, and um, Unity makes it, to their credit, very easy to boom, boom, lock me out of that, and, but, yeah, I am with you, Jordan, what do you, what are your thoughts, Pedro, do you think uh, this is worrying, worrying that they're worrying that, uh, this could damage the business, and also the IPO, if, just just Apple cuts off them data bits. <laughs> you know, uh, the current CEO of Unity, John Ricciatello, used to be the CEO of Electronic Arts. I think this is just par for the course, to be honest. <laughs> okay, to be fair, um, Unity has been very good to Linux. Uh, it, that whole export button business has been very, very nice. And as a Linux user and someone who plays a lot of video games on Linux, it, it, yeah, I would like Unity to keep improving in that respect. And hmm. if they can get more money from their uh, initial public offering, then <laughs> yeah, go ahead. But yeah, no, th this is just a scummy company being scummy because... It is scum. a big company. <laughs> Say what you mean, man. Quit for your whole thing. <laughs> tell us, tell us how you really just feel. just another company that is... Uh, Unity has gotten very, very popular over the past few years. So, yeah, they're going to start adopting the same tactics that... Um, See, I just think. imagine Jordan's doing that and hope somebody will flip a paper football at him so he can munch on it. <laughs> I mean, I, I can be doing it for two reasons. Okay, fair enough. Um, this next story... It's a little bit sad because I wondered, uh, the uh, Linux development team for uh, Lab Zero posted in our Discord that uh, they were piecing out. And I'm like, okay. I honestly, none of my business. I thought it was like some personal stuff. But later in Discord, not Discord, but later on the uh, Twitters, I saw the story roll around that multiple employees have resigned over Skullgirl's studio head's behavior. An internal investigation allegedly revealed a pattern of unwanted sexual comments and other inappropriate behavior by, I don't even know the dude's name. Mike uh, Zed. Mike Zemont? Zemont. Zemont. So apparently this guy allegedly is a complete total jackhole, and this has just been going on forever, and when the employees got together and shared notes, they're like, he's just doing this to everyone, man. 
And uh, that sucks because Lab Zero was an awesome, awesome team that not only made Skullgirls, which was really the first competitive fighter we ever had on Ludix, they also made Indivisible and they delivered it and day one on Linux. So yeah, got a little bit of sads about that. Yeah. No, that's that's not a good working environment. And according to the article, apparently that scumbag got himself up to the top. And it's like, oh, at that point, yeah, it's probably a good time to we leave. Should say because a legend scumbag, because alleged that alleged scumbag, scumbag looks like yes. he's the type that would allegedly <laughs> sue the hell out of somebody for alleged yes. slander. Right? Wait, are, 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 are we are we going to do like the uh, the Scientology episode of South Park and just change all our patreons to John Doe, Jane Doe, John Doe, Jane Doe? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, as uh, if it is as systemic as the people who are leaving claim it is, and. Really, I have no reason to doubt them at this point. It will probably get worse because once someone is at the top, where are they going to go? But yeah, it's a shame. Skullgirls, Indivisible, very good games. They work very well on Linux, but I'd rather lose those than enable that kind of environment. Yeah. Yeah, I mean no. that, that, that's that, right. <laughs> and like, I'm 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 glad the the Lab Zero employees are stepping forward. I'm glad the Ubisoft employees are stepping forward and like bringing light to a lot of this abusive behavior that's happening in the game industry because it's frankly sickening, at least to me. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you're gonna be an dis abusive dickhead, don't expect your employees to stick around. Yeah. Uh, I wish the best to all of the X Lab Zero folks. You guys, like Vince said, are a very talented team. You put out good stuff, and I wish you all the best in the future. Hopefully, you keep putting out awesome things, and hopefully, they support Linux. So, yes. Now, <laughs> now we get to talk about the best operating system known Haiku? to humankind. <laughs> BIOS? Plan 9 from outer space? There you go. It took you a minute. Plan 9, baby. No. Uh, talking about Debian, of course. You know, yeah. whatever, whatever flavor of Linux you happen to be running that week is clearly the best um, until you distro hop again. I don't distro hop. Well, Suze. Suze. Right? Suze. I wanted to throw no, this out there. There's a lot of people in chat realm that uh, would vouch for the Suze. And but, they're wrong. Uh, this this is, uh, it's all about Debian, and it's about uh, setting up Debian for gaming. Oh, and wow. I, I thought they were going to throw me a curveball there, Patron. It sets up uh, <laughs> Solus. No, no, no. The, it, the, it, the it, title it, it, it is sets, very descriptive. <laughs> it, sets up, it sets up Debian to install Arch. That's what it does. Ooh, I, someone should make that. But no, this uh, this actually needs to be made more distro agnostic, because right now it's just focused on the Debian's you just run on Debian's and it asks you are you running stable are you running uh, unstable or are you running testing that that's it uh, and then it checks do you have an Nvidia card do you have an AMD card it will update the Mesa it will install Steam um, it will offer, uh, offer to install Lutris and Wine as well if you'd like and it sets up the drivers along with the 32-bit libraries necessary for those but yeah it also uh, uses Zenity to create just a very simple GUI to basically relay the um, the Bash script in a GUI format. That is very useful, again, for those people that can't let XEO. Um, make this distro agnostic, make it figure out, okay, so this person is running Debian, we're going to give them these options and they're going to go and it's going to run the apt-gets or they're using Manjaro and they're going to use Pac-Man or they're running Yeah, let's Fedora. just keep this on Debian. Uh, it's ours. <laughs> Deal with it. Dash GUI because this is the best distribution ever because it's what I happen to be running right now. And um, no, this, this is good work. I mean, if you want to... Setting up a Deb gaming environment in Debian's PC, again, if you know how to Linux, that's all I can say about that. And that's a thing that without zero ego, I have full faith that both of these things could get Debian and everything. I mean, there's no challenge to it, is there? No. 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 I mean, again, for us who already know how to Linux, sure. No, I'm, yeah, go no. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, <laughs> for our audience, this isn't a thing. But I like something like this out there, and I like a good... So, Jordan, uh, how many, let's not use days, hours until this is in Lutris somehow in shape, form, or fashion? Negative three hours. Okay. 
Yeah, it was already there. <laughs> yeah, Str Str Strider has access to the show notes, so he can plagiarize way before we can insinuate that he's going to plagiarize something. That's why you got to say that he's going to plagiarize it in the show notes, so we like, Lit, damn it! <laughs> foiled again. Le sacre bleu, foiled again. Uh, now I'm, now I want to see some French dubbed Scooby Doo, but I'm too scared, man. I'm not going looking. <laughs> Le Scooby Doo, where are you? All right. Um, Speaking of French. Super Tech Scott, new version, yeah. 1.2. It's out. The team is very happy, which is great because I would be slightly worried if they started out a blog post with going, fuck this shit. Um, 1.2 has got a couple things. <laughs> online play, still compatible with previous versions, so you don't have to worry about it. Nice. No worries there. First thing uh -huh. I noticed I was very happy about is they have this new thing. It's called SDL2. It's new business, <laughs> and you can do things like Cut your controller on after you start the game. Man, well, wonders ever cease. I was very happy about that. Hot plugs. Um, after they're done with this, I know we might get a little ahead of ourselves. They're going to start working on Vulcan too, which, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Now, we played a little bit of it last night where um, it was basically Scott wrecking everyone, but that was to be expected because... Everyone else was like, hey, I hit a thing. Ah, oh, I hit you. And you would hit her, Scott. He was like, die, fuckers. <laughs> that's how that rolled, man. Everyone had a good time. It was fun. We, like, we even opened it up and let some other people come in. So we were full. But uh, we did find one bug. Uh, everyone could connect to my box. But apparently, uh, if, if you're located in Canada and your name's Scott, you cannot connect to any other servers. Oh, well, that's under that's Windows shame. or Linux. That is a sh that is a big old shame. Um, yeah, uh, there, there's a couple other things with the 1.2 release as well. Uh, if you're running a IPv6 LAN, you too can cart. Um, I mean, like, yeah, they, they got that network multiplayer working. They're really going in with that. I'm so good on them. Uh, there's also a per yeah, there's a persistent <laughs> online leaderboard as well. And like Ben said, Vulcan Super Vulcan cart. Ah, do you I, I, I don't know. I don't have like particularly high hopes because at the end of the day, it's just going to be like, it's going to look exactly like Super Tux Cart, except I know it's going to be running Vulcan on the back end. And that's... Come on. We, we were talking about that uh, when we were streaming last night. I think Alan brought it up reading like the requirements. And it was like, make sure that your CPU is at least 400 megahertz. <laughs> that that's, that's, that's <laughs> sounds about right. I mean, uh, I could run it on uh, an Atom single core 1.6 uh, gigahertz you could run it on android you can run it on yeah. a raspberry yeah like. like like good too <laughs> yeah good work team good work team happy to see that we didn't have any uh showstoppers at all so unless yeah. your name is scott unless your name's scott and you live in canada <laughs> i saw the screenshots yeah <laughs> ah. <laughs> it, it was fun uh it's always a fun game to play and there were uh people playing it as soon as i we started so yeah. yeah good on that uh one last thing i wanted to throw in probably irresponsible of me i don't like giving you people tools for mayhem and madness all the time but this is obs virtual background because the author was sick and tired of zoom meetings with people fucking around with that virtual background shit and he's like you know what i'm gonna make a loop back we talked about this on weekly daily wednesdays a couple of months back which he did and he's like, uh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and make this a plugin for OBS too. Which he did. And yeah, you can hang around for this. If you've ever wanted to do the, what is it? You know, just like the bullshit background of like, what would you put behind yours, Jordan? Mount Doom. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's her new you thing you have to remind him didn't you? yeah it's delicious <laughs> no, I I'm almost think... out too I got like one more of these in there <laughs> <laughs> this is a what would you call it a virtual green screen there he goes yeah. he, he's got the uh, crazy dystopian nightmare let's see if it space is it space <laughs> it's just space yeah uh, uh, it's, it... don't be spacist <laughs> Some space doesn't have to be a dystopian nightmare. Not all the time. Uh, at, at least it's not Kevin Spacey as a background. That'd right. be uh, too creepy. So one <laughs> no, thing no. I want to point out on this is you're going to have to uh, give old uh, Uncle Jensen some cash because this does require CUDA mm, to pull this yeah. off. And it doesn't work. I, don't, not, I didn't see anything. Uh, 
CUDA, yeah, there's nothing for OpenCL, so yeah, you need a FFmpeg. Mm, not at this Good time, no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, NPM, so I'm probably not going to mess around with it, but... <laughs> Enjoy NPM install world. Mm. <laughs> Have fun, go play with it on your next stream. Have a background thing, or you could just use that to green screen yourself out ish it never works all that well but hey this uh it's there could play with it indeed all right coming up next we promised it in the steam segment it's happening now yeah the chairquisition of children of morta oh man i thought we were gonna have children throw chairs at us Welcome back to your favorite slice of life anime, The Chairquisition, where we go to school and do, anime, do it. Follows the chair. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Children of Morta, <laughs> uh, developed by Dead and Mage on the <laughs> on the Unity engine. Um, you can pick it up for about uh, twenty one bucks. Uh, what is it? Children of Morta is a story driven action RPG about an extraordinary family of heroes lead the Bergsons with all their flaws and virtues against the forthcoming corruption. Um, I'm gonna thank Eight Bit Studios or Eleven Bit Studios rather for sending us keys. Pedro gave the whole story behind that. Eight Bit. 11 bit 16 bit i don't know there's bit some bit. some some <laughs> integer of bits that that's how many bits let's let's let's, let's get started but then how to how to how to play on debian man um over here on debian 10 point whatever it is this week uh i think it's still 0.5 on the ryzen thread sipper 1920x uh 32 gigasols ram nvme with a little baby non-cape edition 2060 runs pretty good Maybe no surprise. I mean, it launched out of the box with the X clone controller, PS4 controller, correct button prompts. Thank you, developers. Thank you so much. I do enjoy that, mainly because I'm trying to get some use out of my hooker red PS4 controller because that thing was still like $50, man, and I never use it. <laughs> Performance wise, with 2060 at UHD, 2160p, it holds 60, no problems. Not really any issues with slowdown. I'm happy about that. But I wrote this like right at the beginning of the game when it comes down to my experience with it because I was providing some background um, VO work. I was like, welcome to the wacky adventure of Mr. Pixel Pants and his vampire stone. Because like, hey, my stone's right out of power. I'm going to stick it to Carl the llama and suck the, his last <laughs> remaining life force out. It works again. You must finish your work, Carl. Needless to say, I approved, so I continue playing. Um, yeah, that's what I took at the beginning of the game. By the way, you know, play that intro all the way through, because all the things that light up and look like save icons aren't. So <laughs> keep uh, guess, guess how I learned that the second time I was playing through all that. Um, well, kids, here's what we have. We have another hipster pixel dungeon crawler with, you guessed it, procedurally generated levels. Yay. Uh, did I mention it's an action roguelike? I don't know how I'm going to make non plus noises, but pretend I just did. Like all games of the silk, it's live, die, repeat, but you do have this moon crystal, so instead of dying, you're teleported back to the hub. From there, you guessed it, you upgrade your implements of stab and you're back out it. But. I left out an important step because every time that you return to the like little hub, another crumb of story unfolds. And you know what? It's not boring. It's kind of interesting. Like, hey, what's going on here? And they're telling you a little bit of a story, which, okay, I'm down with that, man. Uh, where do I want to go with that? So, you know, adventuring, what are your options? Tank, that's what you would call the main character, right, Jordan? Like a tank? Yeah, yeah. Sword, sword, sword and board and arrows. Those All are right. your options. Tanked and ranged. And okay, I don't have anything wrong with that. I found ranged more to my liking. I think Jordan will might agree with me to that. Uh, but it, it was kind of boring after a while. I, it was basically just run away, pew, pew, run away, pew, pew. The tank just got me killed to death a lot because I'm very ineffective at playing that. Uh, good art. You gotta, you gotta block. That's the. Yeah, right. Shield. Yep. Shield wall. <laughs> But back to it, good art, plenty of replayability, and an actual story that, okay, I didn't mind so much, you know, because it's clearly designed to where you don't always live through every adventure, at least not up to a point. So it was keeping me entertained between uh, getting killed to deaths. And it's only 20 bucks. I mean, hell, I, I could probably have an all right time doing some runs with me mates 
every now and then with this. And, uh, well, as long as they have Steam and one of us has a PC with a grunt and the bandwidth needed for remote play, because you guessed it, Dead Mage. Only put local co-op in this in 2019. And it, it's kind of hindsight with the whole, you know, COVID thing going on, man, because, you know, I can't necessarily invite a group of friends over for a party because, you know, hey, reasons. Listen, I don't hate it. I don't. And it's obviously well done. If you're watching the video, take my word on it. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the pixel art, but I like this. I'm down with it. It's priced wicked good. And for the level of work that went into it, I think it might even be underpriced, but you, you got to tack on some online multiplayer and in those pixels, then I could definitely play this because I didn't have a bad time playing this with the Jordan and I wasn't playing it with it. I, I was just a uh, mystery science theater 3000 watching it and like, okay, I'd like to join in. And Steam Remote Play is just, uh, <sighs> it's doable, <laughs> but you two are going to talk more about that. I'm going to say, mm -hmm. I'm not going to give it one like I normally do with anything that's hipster pixel, rogue, anything, Ike. Uh, but I will give it to him. All right. Uh, yeah, on uh, Fedora 32 64-bit with the 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. Uh, it does not play nice with Steam input, so um, with the DualShock 4, so I had to disable it. And then you get your lovely little cross, square, triangle, whatever, uh, DualShock prompts. Um, there's no character blindness here. Everything is very good and distinct, uh, which is good. Um, you don't you don't get killed to death because you lose track of your guy, except if you're doing multiplayer and you you're staring at the wrong health bar because. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, so um, the pixel art is also very good. Uh, it's a little juxtaposed by matte paintings. I kind of wish they went all in with the pixel art, but whatever. You got to do you. Um, and the soundtrack very generic fantasy. Don't have any negative opinions on it. Don't have any positive ones either. It's just there uh fun wise i mean i have a soft spot for dynastic storytelling i like um it makes things interesting when you're able to cover like uh the story of a group of people over time it makes individual characters less important the events seem a lot larger in scope and you know there, there's there's the question of legacy there's the question of like how longer time frames impact stories um and this this game looks like it has its going for him. The narrator just needs to shut the fuck up, though. Um, <laughs> there's a, there's there's a lot of telling, and th there's there's a little bit of confusion when it comes to show and don't tell because you think, oh, you can't show via dialogue. You can absolutely show via dialogue. Uh, here, it's just the narrator telling me about things that are happening and narrating stuff. I don't I don't know. It just I I'm not a fan of it. Um, the gameplay itself, it's all right. Uh, it's a pretty standard twin stick shooter dungeon crawler. Um. I was uh, honestly expecting like uh, so I, I tried the uh, the range dude first uh, for my first run and then I went to melee. I've honestly thought the range dude would have a lot better of an edge, but it's decently well balanced between the two of them um, because you're do you're doing a lot more running away and poking uh, chip damage. You know uh, something you I didn't figure person. out with the range. You went to the range second, right? Like I, I yeah. did. Uh, I didn't know the second. Uh, Hat stick, the analog stick was to shoot, so I was trying to manually aim and hit X to fire. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's a little weird. Like, I, I I genuinely preferred the keyboard and mouse controls to the twin stick. The twin stick just felt off, Um, but that's just me. Maybe, maybe it's just because I started playing it with the keyboard and mouse, and then I just got used to it. I don't know. Um, Yeah, and um, yeah, uh, I got to the point where you unlock the little child rogue guy with the twin daggers. I do not grok him because, like, with, with the melee dude you got the shield you can block the block can do chip damage it protects you with the range dude you can dive a lot um basically you get a third roll with the rogue character and i yeah you, you get killed it's a lot. ship damage you just have to avoid taking damage yeah, yourself which, <laughs> I, I was talking about that on on thursday i like yeah sure it makes the fights intense but it also makes it boring because there's a lot of waiting involved um the progression system is interesting too i like how um upgrading you it it encourages you to not just play one dude you can play other people and if you every tier of like abilities trees you unlock upgrades everyone so um everyone is still kind of kept the scale and the abil the abilities are what gets uh, upgraded via the levels it's not like the actual health damage output which i thought was a good way to scale the difficulty also the difficulty does keep up as you get stronger and stronger which is good um 
yeah um but yeah my, my problem here is the fights right because it's a lot of just like running around finding a finding a funnel to like hot gates them to death or if you're playing the range dude just kite kite forever um the, some of the boss fights throw a wrench into that because the uh, you, you you need to you need to be able, you're you're dealing with multiple uh, attack vectors at once, and the game does not usually excel at that. I got through that first boss fight with like the wombo combo of like regeneration and a decoy dummy that like allowed me to have a minute to regen some health. Um, but uh, yeah, with that you're kind of at the whims of the RNG. Like if you took a bunch of damage and you don't have the right item layout, it will be very very difficult. They got the combo meter as you can see underneath. It gives you some extra money. It gives you some extra damage. That's nice. Um, yeah, multiplayer. Uh, that's that's definitely a thing. Um, like Ven said, there is no integrated online multiplayer. You got to use Steam Remote Play, which in 2019 or it's not 2019. It's 2020. I wish it was 2019. Take me back. I want to go back. Um, but. <laughs> Yeah, it, it irks me when games like these are couch only and hot damn. I was I was playing a little bit with Pedro with the remote play that input lag. It's it's there and it is it is weird. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, it needs some like proper network multiplayer. Um, then I could maybe give it three chairs, but instead I'll give it two. It's well done. It's just not it doesn't tickle my pickle. Uh, over here on um, KD Neon with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launched, it held 144 2560 by 1440 it tickled my ear holes with the uh, raspy narrator tones, uh, the pixels were particularly pixely, and it, it's, there's no getting away from that, uh, and Grandma has a permanent O face going on, she's always very, very surprised, like, oh! But yeah, the DualShock worked out of the box and it had proper prompts, as has been mentioned. And you can also rebind everything if you so choose, like all of the action keys, all of the movement, everything, you can rebind it, which is nice. You don't see that very, very often. But when it, come to the f when it comes to the fun, I had a sneaking suspicion that I would like Children of Morta when I saw, I think it was Jim Sterling play, uh, play the game when it first came out. It's like, Oh, that that seems like something I would like. So I did some digging on the game. I saw their Kickstarter. It's like, oh, there will be a Linux version. So I went to Steam. It's like, there's no Linux version. Oh, it's one of these, is it? All right. But as uh, apparently uh, whatever issue with the Unity engine was causing uh, Linux versions to not be possible has now been fixed. Thank you. Uh, we're starting to get a lot more of those again, which is really, really nice. Um, so, yeah. The the roguelike elements here are what I personally like. Uh, they're a lot more like Rogue Legacy because you don't lose your gold when you die. In Rogue Legacy, you only lose the gold when you go talk to death and he takes whatever gold you didn't spend on purchasing the upgrades. Unlike uh, Undermine, which was stupid and it was grindy. Uh, but here, you get to keep your gold and you get to keep uh, all the stuff you find, which is very nice. It actively reduces the grinding significantly and uh the story uh also introduces the like the upgrade mechanics like uncle ben opening the forge or you unlocking the book of Rhea, or finding the um uh, the diary of grandpa all of that happens organically and like Jordan already mentioned, leveling up the characters also provides bonuses to everyone in the family. So you can pick whichever one you like and you don't feel terrible if for any reason you want to try another one. It's like, oh, they already have some of the buffs, which is very nice. And the way those characters unlock is very, very structured. And again, it's very much based on the story. And I like that. It's a roguelike game with a damn story. Not a terrible one at that. Okay. To be fair, it hits the whole cursed family trope thing. It basically hits all the notes in that. But yeah, dude, it's it's a nice story. Now, the narrator is not as good as, you know, the Bastion narrator, but it does a good job of it. So as far as I'm concerned, four chairs. <laughs> all right. There you go. Pe Pedro, Pedro likes it. Um, I, do. I don't. I don't know. The, the, the one thing. One thing you brought up with like rogues with story. I, I one of one of one of the things that appeals to me about Every like the rogue, rogue genre has a story. Every <laughs> rogue has its thorns. No, it's um. 
it's like the the emergent narrative right that 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 that's what that's what appeals to me in this uh genre of game like the the the, the difference between narrative and story story is what happens after you're done playing and you get out of like the tough boss fight and blah 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 this is just very narrative heavy and i don't i don't know i felt i felt it was a little i agree with pedro as somebody say ah this is dungeon crawling for me is a chore i'm like hey look content though yeah, all right. things are happening. Yeah, There's a story. someone put a lot of work into uh, crafting the story and crafting how the story develops. It's like, well, oh, it's a roguelike, so you're going to die a lot and you're going to go back to base a lot. Let's progress the story at that point. It's I like, mean, even thank even you. so much as coming up with a mechanic of like, <laughs> oh, you just don't respond. I mean, like, hey, look, you don't actually die. We wisp you away through we, the floor. We, 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 right. we, we, we pull, we'll pull you back. Like I, like I said, there. It, it it's it's a personal preference thing. It's almost like we have differing opinions, which is the point of the joke. Sure. No. <laughs> Coming up next, we get feedback from our last chair acquisition, as well as multiple eyes. So yeah. many eyes Potato. everywhere. And I suppose we are about to use self destruct. No, because, we're a place uh, of fun. Our bodies I'm are fun. See, I'm gonna use splash. <laughs> a dilapidated fun land. <laughs> splash attack. Right, magic carp. Uh, you you do that. Uh, we on the other hand are a Linux Game Cast, and the website is LinuxGameCast.com. If you hit the contact button, there's a very very simple form that you need to fill out to send some hate mail over in our direction. Uh, just make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you pick, unless you want to ask Jordan for relationship advice, uh, or you're a game developer and you'd like to send us some keys. If that's the case, make sure you include three of them, because if you don't, well, we're just going to make fun of you, and you don't want that. No, we won't. We've, <laughs> we've had uh, many, many instances of people who weren't terribly appreciative of us making fun of them. So, well, uh, <laughs> more than likely, we'll just ignore you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> just, just to be real with you. Um, so, short and sweet, because we got to bounce up out of here. Uh, we talked about a game last week because we reviewed it. There's probably a connection there. I haven't quite finished putting the yarn together, but the developer of that game, e e Jordan, take this. He's e your people. E e e El Hazor, Azor Ahai, the prince who was promised, Eldrick Shadow Chaser, Yerkun the hero. First yeah, of I his name. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is about flying machines, man. It's short and sweet, but he's like, hey, thanks for the review and uh, the detailed feedback, which I don't don't go accusing us of detailed feedback. Uh, those were our thoughts, hints, and allegations. I did notice there was an update to Flying Machine earlier this week, though. There was. Mm. Price drop. Mm. eleven ninety nine now. <laughs> mm. So that's, that's right there to like a curiosity fuck. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. The, and, the, the, uh, the, to the be Steven fair. Sausage Roll strategy didn't pay off, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he did say it's like, okay, I didn't mean to um, lower the price after the early access was done, but Valve asks you to wait a month before you can do that. So I'm going to yeah. be honest about that because <laughs> think about what you just read then later said. It's going to lower the price after early access. Yeah. I mean, pay the iron price if you want to get it early. Them. So what, st stab the developer if you want to get access to an early access game? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, Lysa Tully. I didn't forget. <laughs> that's, that, that's what the iron price is when you stab people. But iron. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so Dawn. Dawn um, is commenting on the googly eyes. And, uh, well, the googly eyes, well, he says, I'm not sure Pedro has enough googly eyes. I mean, Cage has more than the microphone you need put, does. Do you need to put googly no. eyes on your glasses over your eyes. No, no. If if, if Pedro <laughs> would have thought about this for one second, this entire show, he would have had like 15 on the back of his hair and turned around just then. <laughs> oh, no. We, we, we need to get him like booty shorts with googly eyes on the butt cheeks. What did this say? Googly instead I of juicy? No, no, I we, we gotta make him spark and the googly eye like, to the microphone uh, in between each segment, but I don't know where the googly eyes are. I oh, sure you know oh, you took them away from you. <laughs> you, you could be Probably. like Tian Shinhan and have a googly eye in your forehead. Uh, <laughs> then you could do the tri-beam. He's, he's already got that going, man. 
But yeah, well, no, need... I, I think Nori stole my googly eyes because I cannot find them, so, uh... Yeah, <laughs> it's them. <laughs> it's Dea. Well, at least one of us has uh, de-googled their life. Who? You know what? Fuck both of you. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> On that bombshell, uh, I... we gotta bounce up out of here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Boom! If you want to get a hold of me, I'm at Vinstone on Twitter. I will read if you tweet at me somewhere. Guaranteed. And um, just at Vin at mast.linuxemcast.com. We have a federated mast of dons um, over there hiding. It's terrifying. I'm I'm the Google master. I've, I'm so bought into the Google ecosystem. I've, it's too it's late like, for what us. What, what am I supposed to do Google Docs our life? I'm like, I have Gmail open right over there. Who the right. fuck are you talking we're about? Reading Google Docs. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm Jordan. You can find me at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Go complain at me and tell me I should switch over to Facebook office. I don't know. Facebook office. Yes. Mm. Oh, my God. You hoarder. This Put yourself starts. in the box. Put some googly eyes on the nameless one's eyes and then shake it around a bunch. No, 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 dude. This is what Nori shakes and throws to the <laughs> ground when she says she's leaving him in a few years and he's got his entire house filled with that shit. It all started uh, no, here. I only do that for the games that I actually really do like and that was solely for Fallout 2. But hey, if you'd like to talk Fallout 2 with me, Twitter, just at an accounted for with F-O-U-R. So, yeah, just uh, hit me up on there and we'll talk some Fallout 2 because I like Fallout 2. I like Fallout 2 a Very lot. Very beautiful people. Um, <laughs> thanks for making, letting us do this, man. It's awesome. We're going to roll some credits and thank you again. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as I find them. There they go. <laughs> it's the weekly daily Wednesday credits. Oh, no. Well, damn it. Fuck you it again. was that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Got to thank all our lovely, lovely executive producers, the people who are making this possible, giving us money week after week so that we can pay for hosting and bandwidth. These people include folks such as uh, Arthurin, Empty, The Atomic Ass, Mike G, Bob Ramt, Aldius, McGeek, Scoots, Frosty the Clawman, Drummer7, Mr. Fox Dog, the only Tiki, and the rest of our producers the like rest of David them. S. The best. Jolly, the Topical, rest is the Guys, best. Baltar, Massavoni, Colsta, Dirty Dean, G, Jack, Sherevig von Hoppenstaben, Kylenix, <laughs> Mike W, Jordan, the other Jordan, Jordan. Gonzo, 2000, Paul, Brock, I almost called Bram. him Turd Gills, but not Dodger, I didn't but not that Craig, Craig. Saratanuda, <laughs> Christoph. If, if you need to remote Oxford manage Coma. your PowerShell, <laughs> install Richard Dixon for Linux. Yes. <laughs> on a pyramid. PowerShell on Linux.com and library.tv at Mixed Pyra Pyramid. Py pyramid Linux runs on all your Richard Dixons. You're catching on with my scheme. I told you we were a cult. Ha ah, ha no. ah, <laughs> Illuminati! Zoltan! Zoltan? Or Zoltor? Zoltan! Zolta, which one? How, how do we do the Power Rangers again, man? I want Brian Cranston to show back up. <laughs> I think I think you gotta pay a speaker's fee. What? You gotta pay a speaker's <laughs> fee then. <laughs> Brian Cranston ain't cheap. Five dudes.